This is the last video in the mini series for concept number 6C. In this video, I'll take you through the process where I create simple UVs to prep our geometry and swap the high poly geometry for the low poly one that we used in the RBD sim. Using a low poly geometry for simulation speeds up your workflow, and we don't lose anything in the end. I'll also show you how to create real simple substance painter textures, but that's not really the focus of this video, so it'll be a very quick demonstration of painter. I actually left out this video and forgot to upload it, so there's a huge time gap between between concept number 6B and this video 6C. It was a viewer that reminded me about this video that I completely forgot about. I would never have remembered about this video, so thank you for reminding me. Basic concept number 6C, materials and textures. I want to put some textures on our high poly starting position on this guy. Since it's a little hard to define seams in this guy just because he's moved, let's go back to the high poly version. So we can have a little bit more real estate. This is where we want to put the textures on. Let's put some textures on. Let's define some seams first. It's just easier to define seams on this guy because he's right at the origin of the axes rather than when he's in position. It's, it's a little harder. I'm going to be using those angles since this geometry here and this geometry is exactly the same geometry. That's how the point of form is so useful. This can get it in the starting position without changing the original geometry. Whatever we do here in this guy ends up over here because the point of form does not change the geometry itself. All it does, it moves the geometry. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's define those seams. I'm gonna call it seams. Primitives, now I'm not gonna be using the base group. What I want to use is the normals. Normals enable that, is I want whatever is pointing upwards. One, zero, zero. So I want everything on the top side. I'm gonna take this uh, group node and I'm going to copy it because I want everything on the bottom side as well. So I want to put it down here. And what we're going to do is instead of replacing existing, I'm going to union with existing. So I want to add onto the group. But this time, instead of getting the upper side, the upside, I want downside. So we're going to take this and we're just going to make it negative one. So we have the scenes on the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do here is I want to split the geometry based on my seams. Now, usually you would want to convert the seams into edges. So you want an edge down here, going around there, an edge over here, and feed that into a UV flatten or whatever you want. So if you that's the way you want to do that, you can drop down a group convert or group promote, sorry, group promote. And what we can do is primitive to edges and what we're going to promote is the seams and you can see that we have uh, edges highlighted everywhere so just enable this include only elements in the boundary okay there you go there you're going to have that nice clean edge outline these edge groups is what you can feed into your uv unwrap or uv was it uv flatten a node to create those nice uv the way i want to do it is a little different because if i'm going to feed this into a uv flatten the reason why i don't want to do it this way okay let me feed this in the seams here now these uvs are not aligned they're stretched they're not in position like there it doesn't look right even if i choose angular like it's stretched really badly I can try and feed in the seams down here as well. See what happens. Well, it's it's not what I like. It's it's not the way I want. If you're going to use this UV flatten, you're going to need another seam down here. But that would create breakpoint when I put my textures in. I find it easier to do it like this. I'm going to split the geometry based on my seams. Now I got geometry that's flipping between these two faces. Now I'm going to throw down a UV project. Now I can project it differently. So I can project these ones. Now what you need to do is come over to the initialize tab and hit the initialize button. There you go, XZ plane. Now I'm gonna do uh, another UV project on the other side. Now there's a bit of stretching here, you can see. So we're gonna fix this by choosing a different UV projection. Instead of an orthographic projection, I'm gonna be choosing a cylinder. 
and I'm going to hit the initialize. You can see that this is nicely tileable. Move the mouse over to the 3D viewport and press 5 on your keypad. It'll allow you to see your UVs. You can see that the UVs here go all the way to the end of the UV square. So that means this is tileable. It'll look like there's no seams. When you throw on the texture, it'll go like infinite loops. It'll go round and round and round just perfectly. As long as you have a tileable texture filling up the entire UV square. So that's just like a, an image. So that's why I prefer to do it this way. Now the only issue now is that we have our geometry split up. We have this UV projection uh, cut off from the bottom, just merge it together. Now merging it together does not make it a watertight jump tree. It just simply merges it together. So what you need to be aware of something on this edge here, 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 here. And I'm going to lift it up. So you can see that there's a hole. This is not watertight. This is this edge here is not welded down to this edge down here. So that's it's creating this hole. That's terrible. What we can do is throw down a fuse node to fuse it back together. So let's do another test. Select, 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 select. Let's lift it up. Okay, now it's fused together. You can see that there's no, sorry, that there's no hole here. This is welded together nicely. Now that we have textures on here, let's go down. Let's throw down a null here so I can call it something. Out render and actually put an output node. So the output node will always render. It will be the one that you see up here. When you come up to the object level, it will always point to the output node. Throw our camera tracking here. You can see the UVs are there. Now we need to slap some sort of texture on here. What you can do now is export this geometry. It's important that you export the right geometry. You need to export this one, not this one, because this one is animated. It probably won't make much of a difference, but it, you're going to end up with a lot more files than you actually need. And when you're working with more complex scenes, that's going to be bad for your hard drive. So FBX ROP. And I'm going to throw it into Substance Painter. I'm going to put it in my Exports folder. Tube UV. It's important to uncheck the ASCII. I'm not sure if ASCII, uh, Substance Painter accepts ASCII, but I, I would uncheck. Now it's important that you have render current frame because I only need one frame. I want to save it. And there it is. Now let me open up Substance Painter. Create a new project. Exports. So this is the tube UV. I'm going to keep everything unchecked. This is a very simple geometry and it does not have UDIMs. I don't really have to care about this in the UDIMs. Basically, when you do not check this, it's using the legacy workflow. And since this is a super uh, simple geometry, I don't really care about anything else. I just want to click and drag the uh, texture on. So let's try this out. Now, okay, let's throw down... I think the one that I used was was the one I used. So I'm going to click and drag it on. Pretty cool. Remember to come over to the Layers tab in Substance Painter and enable the Height Texture. So let's just export this. And I have a special profile here that removes the mesh name from the exports. Okay, so we get our textures down here now. So I've already created the material ahead of time. I'm not going to go over the redshift material and how to set all that up because the focus of this tutorial is RBD deformation. So let me copy and paste it. All right. So here's the material. Let's do a quick check. So I'm going to grab my output and I'm going to drag it over here so I can do a quick check in redshift to see if it's actually doing the right thing. I'm going to create a new camera and camera two where I can move freely. So camera one will be the camera tracking. So let's go camera tracker. Camera two is the free camera. So let's open up. And I need a light. Go over here. Let's uh, texture. I'm just going to choose an HDR. Remove that. Let me remove that from the background as well. So display environment light as background. Let's go back in. The output of this object. Now, this is giving me an error. Let's see. Oh, it's not finding the material. That's because I have to relink it. Click this here. Let's go in. Geometry, material node, tube ship. Okay. Oh, there you go. So let me turn up the light. It looks a little weak. Uh, two. Okay, that's a bit better. Now, let's see how it looks when it's deformed. 
Uh, we need to switch cameras for this. So let's switch it to the camera tracker and here in the camera tracker here. And we also have to put this output back to the right one because we want to see the actual deformation. So let me turn off the redshift first. Uh, put the render flag here. Oh, here it goes. Okay, so it's starting to crash. This is a good one. Let's see how this looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's not too bad. You can see it deform. But as I said, because of this, the polygon, our topology here, it's really affecting how it deforms. If you want better deformations, you're going to need more polygons in this high poly here. Using the subdivide is a very simple way of getting higher polygons. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.